Everybody give it up for everything! Comedy in Big Rapids! We tell jokes. We've, we've learned from the best. We've got Jay Harris coming up in a little bit. He's disappeared and now he's scaring. Freaky. So, uh, I just figured I would, I would start with a little bit of local news. Uh, weather's wonderful right now. I don't know if anyone's had an opportunity to stop by Mitchell Creek Park uh, down there right outside. They've got the, uh, the dome is gonna get ready to put up. Whoa. Sorry, that guy's more important than everyone here. We have to listen to his vehicle. Uh, they have a dome down there now. Eight panels, trapezoids. Each panel depicts a different thing about Big Rapids and what it's like to be here. It's gonna, once it's up, it's gonna move from season to season. It's gonna be really cool. They were thinking about doing one for Reed City, where I live, uh, but it would be seven panels of nothing and one panel of cousins kissing. <laughs> Gave up on that plan. That's not like I I love it here. I really you guys put it on a water thing after I came, which is great because I came from Flint. So it's good to know that the water loves me. I love the water. It's fine here, but <laughs> I get the most amount of energy. Anybody here? Anybody ever, here ever been to a meeting? I know, some, I, know, I know I've seen some teachers here who have been to school board meetings, but anybody else been to a meeting in their city? Exactly. You're all a disappointment. Why aren't you participating in your government? I am gonna give you a crash course so you will not be scared of going to a meeting. So you're gonna go, you're gonna, let's say a Big Rapids Commission. Mondays are first and third Monday of the month, 6.30, right over there. Lovely crowd, it's always great. You're gonna get there, everyone's gonna chit chat a little bit. I guess I've never been on time to one. I just, last minute I'm walking in, but as soon as you get in, the first thing they're gonna do before they start any of the newsy stuff is they're gonna say the Pledge of Allegiance. I know, everybody knows how to say the Pledge of Allegiance, but you gotta think about it because you don't wanna seem like you're, like you're just you know, half-assing it. You really wanna, patriotic as possible, like, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And as you're progressing through it, you will notice that there are other people in the crowd that say the Pledge of Allegiance at a different rate than you. Like they don't know if they're gonna have a comma before the under God. I think that you should say it with no spaces generally. You know, one nation under God. Like, what's a nation under God? I don't know. What's a widget stand? No one knows. <laughs> it's a joke about the Pledge of Allegiance, guys. Like, I can't really like, treason is a thing. I don't want to get in trouble. But so they're gonna do that, and then, the, and then they're gonna have public comment, okay? So public comment is when Anybody who's at the meeting, ooh, it got quiet. You guys are like, ooh, we're gonna learn stuff. <laughs> Anybody at the meeting during public comment is allowed to say anything they want as long as it doesn't relate to an item on the agenda. Cool, right? I use it to practice stand-up comedy. You guys, everybody here paid to get in. You could have showed up on a Monday, Big Rapids. I do this all the time, nobody knows. <laughs> But we've had some people come in town recently. Uh, Bonner Group, uh, Hyatt Palma, advisors that come to tell us how to make our town better, how to, how to fix things. And the, and the big thing about it is that they, they deliver hard truths. They tell you the thing that you don't want to hear, that's hard to, that, that you know, we would get in trouble if you said to someone else. And they say it hard, and then they, they get out of your hair and they go away so, you, so that no one has to deal with it. But I think that we could tell each other the hard things to hear, you know? You just have to be nice about it. You have to deliver it in a nice way. So I've written some jingles that'll go with, with just things you need to keep in mind uh, for, for, you know, the city of Big Rapids. Uh, let me see, I've written them down here. I wanna make sure I get them all right. Support your parks, support your parks. If you don't fund them, no one will come here. Yeah, it's hard to hear, right? It's difficult. How about this one? If we don't have a library, all the kids will be dumb. No, I'm not knocking the Riverview teachers though. They're great, I love, yeah. Riverview rocks! 
I should have started with that. <laughs> oh, how about this one? Well, yeah, it does. You guys dance, it's awesome. Yeah, that's another great thing about my job. I get to go to the schools and see everybody having fun. It's so great, except, so like, you're, I'm at the schools, right? And I go to these assemblies all the time. They're super fun. Everybody who has kids in a big rapid school, they're, they're learning cool things and they're having fun. But when I'm in there taking pictures of an assembly, they're all just sitting on the ground, just rubbing their fingers on it, and they're, they're all just there. I can't, I'm big. I don't think about how tall I am. I live in constant fear that I'm gonna be taking pictures of something and I'm gonna hear like and I'm gonna look down and I'm just stepping on a child's hand. And then it's gonna be like, why is he doing that? What does he hate children? No, I'm just too tall and I ah. Anyway, here's one more jingle for you. Um, <laughs> build a sidewalk on Perry Street. <laughs> Otherwise, more people will die. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. See, I, I, really, I really love it here. It's great. Uh, I, I don't fit in here, though. You know, I'm like, I, I covered the fair for the first time. I'd never been to a fair before. I wore flip flops. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't wear flip flops to the fair. <laughs> I was trying to fit in, so I thought, all right, cool, I'll be tough, I'll chop wood, you know, like that's a, that's a cool like country thing to do, I'll fit, people will respect me then, but I didn't know where to get wood, so I had to drive to Grand Rapids to Whole Foods to buy uncut artisan logs and bring them home and cut them. <laughs> that was funny, I don't, you guys are wrong, that was, you guys are just wrong. <laughs> How about this one? I tried to blend in, you know, like, I figured, all right, can't chop wood, flip-flops, I'm an embarrassment, I'll burn my mattress and use it to grade my driveway. So, I, I get my mattress out there, and I set it on fire, and, and it's going great, and then I realize I have a memory foam mattress. I just have a sled now, just a sled. <laughs> dangerous. Everything out here is dangerous. I, I lived in Flint. I lived in Flint. They would not deliver pizza to my house after dark. They, they would, and then someone murdered the only pizza guy who would come to my neighborhood after dark. So I move out to Reed City, and now I still don't get any pizza after dark. But it's like... Uh, there's so there's danger at like every corner here. It's like <laughs> Big Rapids is a symphony of Cologne, and yet there is danger at every turn. <laughs> I went on a plow ride. Hey, people in the back, I can hear you more than I can hear myself. Why don't you enjoy some comedy for a second? I'm gonna tell a funny story about a plow. Yeah, there's some plow stuff. There is a guy, I rode up and down 131 with the guy who's in charge of keeping it clean for everybody. He's been doing it for decades. We're just talking, he's telling me all these great stories, just about being in Big Rapids, it's about life here, it's just great, we're chatting, we're having a great time. I'm enjoying my plow ride, you're up there, it's like a big truck. I'm gonna just get closer and closer to the mic until I'm louder and louder than everyone in the bar. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the big truck, he's telling me about things. It's great, I'm enjoying it. I say, oh wait, I've gotta get a picture. So, I open the door and step out of the plow like it's my Ford Focus. <laughs> yeah, you appreciate what happened. I fell eight feet to the ground and landed on top of a side plow. <laughs> I couldn't walk right for like three days. It was terrible. <laughs> so I don't fit in here, and I don't fit in anywhere else either. Like, I went, I went to Ann Arbor the other day, and we're, we're having a great time, you know, my, my girlfriend really likes it there, 
We're doing pirate swing. Swing dancing. I don't like crowds. I'm not used to, to, to people, large crowds. This is intimidating, but at least you guys are my big Rapids friends and I know you're all cool. Walking into a, a room full of pirate swing dancers was frightening. And then I realized it's swing dancers. It's a bunch of honkies. It's just like this crowd. <laughs> Thanks, Connie. Three claps. I love it. As long as she approves of it. <laughs> so I'm in Ann Arbor. And we go out, and I'm trying to I'm trying to be cool. I'm trying to be tolerant, you know, because it's it's hard to be, like, I'm I'm too old to actually really be a millennial. Which I've written a millennial. You guys ready for a millennial joke? You might be a millennial if you think this joke is ironic. <laughs> yeah, there's my millennials. <laughs> so I'm there, and I'm trying to blend in. I'm trying to show that I'm a, I'm a, a you know. I'm cosmopolitan, I'm cool. So we go to this place, it's, it's a Chinese food restaurant. We've been led there by a guy from China. He orders in Chinese, they bring out all these, all this, you know, dishes of food. I don't get to pick a thing, he just orders family style, they bring it out and we all share. So I'm like, oh wow, this is, this is culturally relevant. I'm, I'm being very, very mature right now. So I'm eating these things and, and I'm like, this is kind of strange, it's crunchier than I expected, but I didn't want to complain. It's like a barbecued chicken thing, a little like chicken nugget size thing. I keep eating it, crunching it. Five minutes later, I realize everyone else is spitting out the bones. In my attempt to blend in, I have eaten nothing but chicken bones. But at least I'm tolerant. Let's see what else is on here. Ooh, change is frightening, scary stuff, also necessary for parking. Just a one for you. <laughs> so, I'm trying, like, my girlfriend would be here tonight. Actually, my fiance now. Uh, Yay! Thank you. She is off. She is off wedding dress shopping this weekend with her mom, which is great. Uh, I wanted to get married at public comment of a Big Rapid City Commission meeting. <laughs> Three minutes max, you know, like you're just in, you're out. I would just tell the mayor, like, mayor, marry us. And he would, I figure he'd go for it, right? No, we can't have that. Not gonna happen. <laughs> so, let's see, responsibilities. Yes, because we're gonna be married and then we'll have children. And I like, I, I, I look up to her dad as, a, as an ideal for responsibility. Because her dad's like a, a, a camper, you know, he's always very prepared. He, wear, he has like a dozen pairs of those pants that the legs zip off of and they turn into shorts. He's never lost a single leg sleeve. Like, I have, I have like six of those and I have one leg for each of them. Don't know what to do with them anymore. Let's see, next, oh no, this is not supposed to happen. Death, we've covered that, fiance, dress shopping, ooh, secrets, who's ready for some secrets? Yeah, I love my fiance because she tells me all the secrets that I can't remember because I drink. So apparently when I drink too much, I sit at the bar and insist that people should go to city commission meetings. <laughs> no, man, listen, you don't understand. You've got to go. You've got to go. Be part of it. Be part of it. And then I fake cried for 10 minutes. She's like, it was all right until you started crying. Yeah. Also, apparently, I sleep talk. Didn't know that. I roll over in the night and I'll say things like, oh, I want you so bad. And then I'll roll back over and fall asleep. And she's like, why did you do that? I'm like, what are you talking about? I just love you apparently, even in my sleep. <laughs> but we're responsible now. Like we, we're getting married, we have a dog. Dogs are awesome. If you are a cat person, that's cool. I respect that, but dogs are better. Cats don't eat all your crumbs. 
Dogs are like vacuums that are alive. <laughs> Which is great, because I'm lazy. I don't rinse my dishes. I just put them on the ground. I've broken three plates since I moved to Reed City because I leave plates on the ground for the dog to clean. It's a real problem for me. But my dog is great, but I live in an apartment, right? He's super energetic. The dog park here, can anyone just give it up real quick for the Big Rapids dog park? Yeah, woo, where are my dogs at? Yeah, you're darn right. It's a great dog park. I love getting out to it, but when I can't, I have to play fetch with my dog like on a leash. So I throw it and then I chase after it with them. And then I throw it and I chase after it with them. And we do that for 40, 47 hours. 47 hours straight, I get all of the fetching in at once. <laughs> Stephen Wright call out. The thing about dogs though, dogs versus cats, a cat will, you know, nonchalantly kind of show you its butt, like all the time. It's walking around, it's just letting, let me get Walter out of the way here. He's just, you know, showing it to you. He's, he's wiggling around, it's cool. He wants you to know it's there. My dog, like, cat, you kind of tune it out. When my dog needs to go to the bathroom, I have to stare at it, though, you know? Like, I have to watch his butt to see if he's gonna poop. Which, to me, was the weirdest, like, cats, you ignore it. Dogs, you can't look away. <laughs> uh, guys, I almost didn't make it here tonight. I got, I got pulled over on the way in. I was using my cell phone while driving. I know, right? Which, I'm gonna fight it though, because I wasn't using my, I wasn't like on my cell phone. I was just using the light to read a book. And you're like, Adam, why don't you just read an e-book? Because I like the feel, you know? I like a real book in my hands. That's, that's why, when I'm reading, I never wear a condom. It's about the feeling. <laughs> Cover their ears. I feel so terrible. And I'm tuning it down. These are like, I've, I've cut out half of them. I'm skipping through here trying to not terrify children. <laughs> a few. Uh, all right, well, in that case, I'm going to say that I love this one because we're, you know, thinking about books. They say there's, you know, the brain is actually the largest sexual organ. It's because they haven't seen my penis. Yeah. She held her face. It, <laughs> it is though, like, I, I, it, being smart turns me on. That's why I love. That's why I love my fiance. Like, I can't have no no Adam time without shake without thinking about Shakespeare. There's the rub. <laughs> so. The cop pulls me over, yells at me for the texting or using my phone to read, and, and then he says, hey, I think you might be under the influence of marijuana. Hey, I know. And a hush fell over the crowd. <laughs> and a hush fell over the crowd over there. Just, you guys were fine. So he gives me the new field sobriety test that they have for if you're driving too high, which is crazy because it's the same as the drunk driving one but they just kind of do it in reverse. So he just stares at me and goes, Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, G, F, E, D, B, C, A. I don't know what to do. I just look at him and... <laughs> Officer problem, the B to seams, what? And I throw the car in reverse and I drive away. <laughs> So cops, right? We have cops. The last time we had a comedy show in Big Rapids, Jim Edinger, great guy, super funny, was not allowed to tell jokes because he had a case where he responded to a call 
They walk up the, the stairs of an apartment, the door opens, and a man in a diaper fires a bow and arrow at him. I don't know what jokes Jim could have told, but I'm guessing it might have involved him falling in love with the next person he saw. <laughs> diaper, arrow, okay. that's a stupid Cupid joke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Since I... <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. It's too traumatizing. I'm dropping that one out. It's just too bad. <laughs> Cover their ears. Cover their ears. I want to sing one song before I go and hand this. Oh, right. They're going. They're running away. You're awesome. Oh, thank you. Give it up for her, Meg. Give it up for Meg. Yes. All right. This is my last. This is my last bit uh, because Big Rapids. I know where. Uh, I know where you put your sex toys. At least I know where you keep them. It's in your sock drawer, but there is one toy that you cannot keep in your sock drawer, and that is, that is a real doll. That is a, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, this is a fake person that they have designed for people to use as a sex toy that you have sex with. Um, and it's too big, you know, it's like, it's like a person. Like, what do you do with, with, a, with a sex toy the size of a person? Do you keep it in a, in a closet? Do you just wait for someone to like open it up? Ah! Oh no 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 no! Don't worry. It's not a it's not a body. It's just a tool I use to pleasure myself. <laughs> See, I I think that you should keep it right in the front hall. There's nothing to be ashamed of, you know. Just have it out there, you know, like this. Like, hey. Adam, that's a pretty nice coat rack you have there. I like what you've done with the umbrella. <laughs> I got her in face palm. Yes. Anyway, I've written a, I've written a, a love song to my to my real doll that I don't have. Uh, her name is Lily. So I just want to sing this for you, and this is my last thing before we give it up for Jay. Uh, it goes something like this. I've got a woman, she's tall and she's fair, with rubber for lips and wires for hair. And when we're out dancing, it feels like a dream. But still I'm in love with a fucking machine. <laughs> Lily, sweet Lily of the uncanny valley, why won't you answer my call? Lily, sweet Lily of the uncanny valley, I forgot to plug you into the wall. I first met my Lily on a dark stormy night with the lightning bolts flashing above. From the moment she sat up on that cold metal slab, well, I knew that we were both in love. Aw, I heard someone aw. Now some folks will say that an automaton ain't no suit and mate for a man. But they shouldn't knock it until they have tried it. A girl who hooks up to your land. <laughs> yeah, people, millennials love it. It's maybe a WAN if you have a wireless network. I'm, I'm not sure how you set up your internet. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will never be able to work in this town again.